Zen video. My name is Kevin Schrader. I'm the technology evangelist for Zen Technologies. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at how you can scale your application in the cloud uh, using Amazon Web Services and Zen Server Cluster Manager and a whole bunch of Zen Server nodes that are going to be up and running in front of them. We're going to be doing this utilizing the Zen Server job queue so that we can maintain our front end performance while we do some kind of calculations on the back end to um, implement the logic of our application. The application is a ticketing system um, that allows you to buy tickets, basically. Um, the example that we're going to be showing here is going to be uh, uh, a stadium about the size of uh, 68,000 people or so. We're not going to sell out the entire thing because that will take a couple of minutes and we need a little bit more hardware than what I have available here. But uh, we should actually see uh, some, pretty, uh, some pretty good performance numbers here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at a little bit about the application and then we're going to go into a little bit about the setup and kind of how to get all this stuff working up and running in, uh, in a cloud-based environment. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the Zen Server Cluster Manager, which you might be aware of already. Um, this is a uh, product that we have that allows you to tie multiple, um, multiple disparate Zen Server instances together and manage them all from one user interface. Um, to be completely honest with you, when I was first looking at this, uh, at building this example, I was going to try and do it without Zen Server Cluster Manager. And I ended up having the problem of not knowing where, uh, where certain problems were occurring in, in the cluster because I wasn't doing things just up front. I mean, I was, had, you know, jobs running in the background and it's actually a relatively complex, uh, well, not too complex, but it's complex enough where you don't get immediate um, an immediate understanding about what's actually going on in your application because the entire thing is, is load balanced and so that makes it actually relatively difficult to, uh, to be able to predict where resources are going to go. So we didn't know exactly or I didn't know exactly where things were going without uh, the cluster manager and when I turned so what I basically came to the conclusion of was that in order for me to actually build this example and show you this example I needed to use a cluster manager because um, with the, the cluster manager, we get um, basically cluster-wide event uh, reporting. And that actually turned out to be extremely important uh, for what I was doing because I did not have the insight to properly manage my application when it was going under load. And so we have a cluster manager set up here. We're utilizing uh, session clustering as well um, in, in our uh, setup here. And we don't actually have our cluster up and running. We're actually going to take a look at how that's actually going to, uh, uh, be done in uh, just a moment here. Cause we've actually got the, the whole process here, you know, pretty automated. So it's, it's actually, uh, actually pretty cool. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually set up our application, uh, so that it can register itself. When a new node comes up, it needs to be able to register with the Zang Server Cluster Manager. So in there, we can go to this uh, feature here where we can go to API keys. Uh, Zen Server Cluster Manager, as of 5.1, um, has a web API they can use. And this example fully utilizes that to basically um, add nodes into the server and use that to kind of get things up and running. So uh, we, use, we have that key set up there. And that key is used by a script called Add Server, which has another API that I actually built on top of... Uh, uh, the current web API, so you have a programmatic uh, mechanism for accessing it. And so basically what I do is I put in my API key and I uh, call this uh, class called cluster add server and it adds a cert the local name um, and it basically registers this instance with uh, the cluster manager. So it's actually rel rel e relatively easy to actually do this utilizing this kind of functionality. Uh, the next thing to take a look at is the application. We're going to take a look at just a couple of the tasks. There's not much that we're going to go into detail here, but there's basically three tasks that we built out. These are all executed on the uh, on the job queue side. Um, the first one is populate data. That's just something that we use to actually just populate um, and, to, and make sure that we have actually have a stadium that we can sell tickets for. Uh, the next one is called request seats. And this one just basically, um, when you're requesting a seat, uh, you can request it in any numbers that you want. But what this does is it pre-calculates uh, certain seat groupings. So if you're going to buy two seats or three seats or four seats, 
what it'll do is it'll pre-build groupings into that arena so you don't have to do extremely complex and very expensive uh, operations on your database to try and uh, you know you know get compact seating which you really don't want to do for tickets anyways what you want is you want to have wide seating or more uh, more of the crowd so you have a wider crowd base so it looks like it's actually fuller than it is um, and so um, that uh, this is kind of what this does it pre-calculates a lot of this stuff it's it's, it's a relatively simple process um, I wouldn't go and put this you know on a on a true uh, ticket selling uh, website but uh, it does the job uh, sufficiently for what we want. The next part is this charge credit card. Right now it doesn't do anything just because I wanted to simulate it but I didn't really want to uh, call a back-end credit card processor. Basically what it does it just does a, a sleep between zero and two seconds to simulate what charging that credit card would be. Again you'll notice uh, that this doesn't use encryption on the credit card number so this is not one that you should be uh, um, using for actually processing credit cards is just here to be shown as as an example so we're about to get going here and what we need to do is we need to kick off our uh, our individual nodes and the way that's done is we're going to select an individual EC2 um, AMI here that's going to be an Ubuntu uh, setup and I have what's called a uh, uh, user data Th this is a, just a simple file um, it's a bash script is what this is, uh, but it's been base64 encoded. And this is for if you need to do things to get your server up and running, uh, if you have any kind of custom functionality that you need to build. And what we do in here is we actually uh, install Zen server, install the application, and then call that add script uh, so that the, um, the, uh, the node will be registered with Zen server cluster manager. So I'll take this and I'll copy it and I'll go to my AMI we'll make sure and paste in our user data into this uh, section here because this is where it'll get the data from we'll select the application uh, security group what this does is it opens up the various ports that you need to have to uh, make your uh, make your application work in this case we've opened up ports 22 for ssh port 80 uh, port 1081 for zen server communication and then uh, another port for the uh, cluster or th for the session clustering mechanism. We'll select a key pair which we basically use to log in. Go to the availability zone 1B and because we're going to be doing some uh, some pretty intensive work we're going to be specifying the high CPU large and we're going to uh, provision 18 hosts. You know how many times have you provisioned 18 hosts with the click of a button in your own uh, in your own setup here. So with that I'm going to take a look at the load balancer while these are uh, uh, getting up and running, you'll see that they're now in the pending state, which just basically means that uh, uh, they're in the process of being provisioned right now. I'll go to my load balancer and I'm going to start adding uh, the individual machines to my load balancer. So I'll click on the plus minus, and the front end is going to be hit uh, pretty hard. So uh, what we'll do is we'll give it about eight or so individual machines. So we now have eight instances, and then we have uh, different uh, clusters, or not clusters, but different load balancers for uh, the payment and ticketing uh, functionality. Uh, one of the features of the Zen server job queue is that it runs over HTTP, and so because of that, you can actually distribute this over one server, two servers, a hundred servers. You have the ability to select um, to put all this stuff behind a load balancer and quite easily uh, scale up your application. So what we'll do is we'll put uh, maybe seven in uh, in this one because in the ticketing one because the ticketing one is going to be doing you know a little bit of you know, more complex processing. So we'll give this guy seven, and then go to our payments and then give it the remaining five. Or the remaining four. Like I said, it's it's not going to be doing much for the payment, so this really should not affect us all that much by having fewer of them in there. So we'll go back to the cluster manager here and check to see if anybody has started registering. They have not. So we'll take a look here then at uh, our individual nodes and see where it is they are. So I just open up a shell. I can look at the user log 
and see it actually uh, setting itself up. So we'll just pause for a little bit here while we're waiting for this to, uh, to continue. Um, but as, uh, as the machines are set up, they'll automatically come online and show themselves in the, uh, uh, in the Zen Server Cluster Manager GUI. Yeah, as you can see here now, we've got a couple of servers being added in. Um, they will be added in one at a time just to make sure that the cluster is um, in a good state because if we go to our session clustering here, uh, we'll actually see uh, that we have uh, different, um, we have all of our servers being uh, uh, set up in there. Um, so we'll just go back to here and see where we are. Yeah, we see that uh, more are being added. So uh, we'll just hold on here for a little bit while longer while uh, they get automatically added to the, to the to the cluster. All right, we have all of our servers now in our cluster. <clears throat> so what we need to do now is we need to set up our database by calling that uh, the, uh, the job that will uh, populate the data. So we'll click on reset scenario here. And I'm going to have 25 seats per row, 11 individual sections, 250 rows per section, and then we're going to have this grouping priority. Now, the grouping priority is, is there to basically um, set up that whole grouping mechanism so that you don't have to calculate each, each individual seat. So this will say you're going, to, you're going to start on the end of the row with four seats, then two seats, then one seat, then three seats, then two seats, then four seats, then two seats, and it'll just go uh, over uh, and uh, repeat itself until the end of the row, and we'll start over with the next one. So we'll click on Create, and what this will do then is it'll clear out any jobs that we have in the uh, system. And it's actually doing it right now. I just clicked on Create, and it sent that request off to a back-end system, um, and uh, it is now uh, creating that, um, uh, that, that data as we speak. Uh, if we actually click on View Status, it's going to be loading it up. It's actually creating an image here of uh, the data as it exists. And you can see that it's still uh, waiting. Now, the what this basically shows is the preference of the seats. The green is the least preferential, and the darker ones are more preferential. And the reds are the so-called uh, primary seats. So uh, you see this one right here. We have one primary seat, then four, and then two, and then one individual seat. Uh, the reds are there to show the... Um, uh, you know, the, the 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 primary seat when you're when you're actually doing that query, so we'll click on view status again. And it will take a little bit of time to process this. All right, and it looks like our job is done. So let's just go through a quick test and see if it actually works. Submit, and we see that it's processing now. We got our seats and put in our credit card information, hit submit, and our ticket has been purchased. And so what this has done is it's gone through the front end, sent the requests off to the back end job queue, the job queue found its ticket and replied back to the front end. Um, this is done over multiple HTTP requests. And if we look at our status, we'll give us some time here to calculate this out again. And we'll see a white bump right there with the two seats that I just sold. So with that, it's time now to actually start the load test and see if I'm blowing smoke at all. Uh, so these two here are the Mongo uh, setup. Uh, if we actually take a look here and we can, we see that we have about 68,000 seats. What I wanna see is the ones that have been sold. So far we've sold two seats. And what I have here are two, uh, Oops, two, uh, uh, two machines that are going to be doing the load balancing for us. So I will get th these two set up and we'll take some representative samples here of a couple of individual uh, machines. And we'll just do top on those. We'll choose one of the uh, one of these here. Should probably be in the uh, processing cluster. Whoop. So I'm just going to watch the top couple of numbers there, and we'll just move this over so we can just kind of see everything on the different servers. 
and see if we can get another one here. Oh, there we go. All right, so we'll move this one over here. So, all right, we can now see the load averages and some of the top ones there. Uh, we can take a look um, and we can watch our main uh, CPU usage here. We have our two uh, load balancing machines and we have Mongo set up. So what we'll do is we will hit the stopwatch here and just kind of see what we can get over a given period of time. So we'll start them up and hit start. And minimize these. We see some traffic starting up. See the Mongo is really kicking in there. We start seeing the load jump up, and we'll take a, a count at about 30 seconds to see how many seats we've sold. And at 30 seconds, we've sold 2,800 seats. We'll give it another 30 seconds and see uh, how it's going. And you'll actually see here that a lot, our load averages are actually pretty decent. Uh, Mongo here we see is you know working pretty hard, um, but this is a single instance of Mongo. If you needed to have more, just provision another server, and um, you get that uh, you know get that running for you there. We'll uh, do another snapshot here at 60 seconds. We've got 6,000 seats sold so far, so 6,000 seats a minute. You know, really not too bad. And the nice thing about this is the instances that I've uh, picked up here cost about a buck an hour. So for a buck an hour, we've been able to sell 6,000 tickets in uh, one step, well, 20 bucks an hour because we've got 20 machines up and running here. Um, but we've been able to sell 6,100 tickets in, in uh, about a minute. And we'll take a look here and see. We're at 8,300 tickets uh, that have been sold so far. Uh, Mongo's still chugging along. Uh, but Mongo right now, you know, is pretty much the... Uh, uh, you know the weak link in the chain because we only have the one machine um, and in most cloud scenarios where you don't need to have um, a strong or high degree of data integrity across individual requests uh, you can use things like simple DB but uh, you know for, for this because we can't sell two seats uh, I opted for a mechanism that could guarantee the consistency across all the machines we're now at uh, 12,000. So with that, within uh, about two minutes, we hit about 11,000 uh, seats sold. Uh, the cluster is still going strong. Um, and pretty much that's it. So let's just stop our test. See kind of what the final, final tally is. Uh, they'll still be processing in the background there. Uh, so yeah, we got about 12,000 or so uh, sold. And now that we've uh, sold all the tickets that we need to sell, uh, we'll go back here and we're done. That's pretty much all you need to know for, to get up and running here with um, utilizing the Zen Server Cluster Manager, the Zen Server Job Queue, and utilizing uh, the Amazon uh, Cloud Platform using AWS, Amazon Web Services. And uh, this will get you up and running and allow you to be able to scale out your applications you know, with pretty much the click of a button and a little bit of uh, you know, thinking going on uh, prior to doing things like your deployment. So with that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's been informative.